Mark Jackson, former Warriors head coach, now working for the Mothership. He was covering uh, the Miami-Indiana series, joining us on the show. I, I've been talking about Lance Stevenson here, talking about LeBron James. What do you think of uh, what he said, his teammates not backing him up after the loss last night? Well, they're using wisdom. And, you know, I, I think it speaks volumes that they're basically saying without saying that, you know, let's just take care of business on the floor. you got to respect greatness. And right now, LeBron is the best in the business. And, you know, you don't want to co-sign when somebody does wrong. And I think uh, it was a failed attempt to get underneath the skin of LeBron and uh, Lance and the Pacers paid the price. What's the scouting report on LeBron when it comes to those kind of things? I, you know, he's a mature basketball player. I think I don't even think it worked with the Sean Stevenson uh, way back when. I just thought they had a very good basketball team. But at the end of the day, the guy is on the court no matter who he's playing against, and he believes that he's the best uh, player in uniform, and uh, he is correct every single night. Uh, but he's a guy that is certainly playing with extreme confidence and a uh, great leader. And um, I think there may have been a time when he was younger that you could – you know, have some effect if, if you want to say that, but you're not going to bother this guy and you're not going to get in his head certain. Well, maybe it's just the last name Stevenson. If it's Deshaun or Lance, those are the only two guys who, uh, you know, dare to do this to LeBron James. Are they related? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure, but if I'm going to say something, I have to back it up myself. Lance, Lance Stevenson, you, you can't have that kind of game if you're going to, you know, tug on Superman's cape here. Well, it, it just made no sense at all because, you know, LeBron is a guy that can impact the game without scoring. So you don't judge him by, okay, he's got 20 points and you've got 23. His impact is all around the floor on both sides of the basketball. And you Lance Stevenson, your impact is not just scoring. Your impact could be like he did in game one, out of pick and rolls, making plays. It wasn't just his scoring. It was his facilitating. So it's a, it's a no-win situation. And uh, to me, I, I think it was a failed attempt, like I said, to get on this his skin and get in his head. Would you have been angry if you were uh, his coach? I would have certainly um, talked to him <laughs> about it personally, and I would have talked to him about it in front of the team because we have an assignment, and it's not an individual battle, and we don't want to get caught up in individual battles. Because if you try to talk about individual battle, and I'd be quite honest with my team, we're not going to win an individual battle. They have two all-time greats, two guys that will be first ballot Hall of Famers. So let's not get caught up. In the individual battle, let's beat them as a team, which we had our sights on all season long. He's Mark Jackson, the former Warriors coach, joining us. Dan Patrick Show, part of ESPN's coverage of uh, the NBA uh, playoffs. Well, you were talking about two first ballot Hall of Famers. So, LeBron, are you talking about Ray Allen or or uh, Chris Bosh along with Dwayne Wade? Well, forgive me, but I, I do believe that they have four guys uh, that's going to be in the Hall of Fame, um, and, and that is those four guys. You think Bosh is a Hall of Famer? Yeah, when you think about it, the guy is a nine-time All-Star and counting. Uh, he's a at least a two-time champ and could wind up being a three-time or uh, even more. Um, he's a guy that's had an incredible career. So we take him for granted, but when you look at his body of work, he's a gold medal winner. When you look at his body of work, it's going to certainly say uh, Hall of Fame. I don't think there's a question about it. Would you rather have Dwayne Wade's career or Ray Allen's? That's a great question. And if if you twisted my arm, I would say Dwayne Wade. Um, and that's with all due respect to Ray Allen, one of the great players in the history of this game, uh, one of the greatest shooters that's ever played this game. Um, you know, but, you know, Dwayne Wade uh, won a championship with, with great role players and help. But he single-handedly, with all due respect to that roster, you know, they ran a one-four flat in that first championship, and he put on a clinic. Um, and I think he's he's a guy that is not a specialist with all due respect. He was arguably the best, uh, second best in the business for a long time at his position. Uh, Serge Ibaka coming back for Oklahoma City. They're making it like Willis Reed against the Lakers in 1970. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I, I don't know how banged up he was, but he's he's back, and that maybe that's changed the complexion of this series. What do you think? Don't disrespect my knowledge of the game. Willis you know, <laughs> knocked down a couple of jumpers and he was done for the night. Serge did a little bit more, <laughs> but it was uh, it was encouraging to see. You know his impact on the game. They're a totally different basketball team, and I even saw what Pop said. He's the best defensive big man in the game. 
uh, his ability to defend, pick and roll, protect the rim, his ability to finish at the rim. Uh, he played with a you know a live body, and, and a, uh, it was a welcome sight for them. And I think you know it, it's a great story. I thought it did a lot for the Western Conference Finals having him back. You uh, plan on coaching next season? Uh, the phone uh, is by my hip. I answered it when you called. <laughs> so <laughs> but, obviously uh, nobody's I'm, calling you. <laughs> yeah, except you <laughs> and my family. But I, I, I'm really uh Have you been called? About, Have you been contacted to coach next year? Uh, not that I know of. I will be talking to my uh, my agent or advisor uh, this afternoon, but I have not talk, spoken to anybody yet. I'm having a great time calling games, and I'm excited. Uh, I'm looking forward to coaching and having an opportunity if that means – you know, this year, uh, I'll be excited about it if, it if it means, you know, moving forward. Or if it, never, if it means I only coach three years, whatever it is. I'm, I'm a guy with great faith, and but I'm certainly locked and loaded and prepared for the opportunity. What do you think of the Steve Kerr hire by uh, the Warriors? More power to him. Um, got respect and appreciation for Steve. Obviously does a great job, uh, did a great job on TNT and continues to do so. He's a quality and class guy. Uh, wish them nothing but the best. Uh, this is a team that's, you know, in in a position to, you know, make some serious noise in the Western Conference and have a legitimate chance of winning it all. So I wish him the best. Did uh, Kerr call you? No, he did not. I did text him, and um, uh, I'm sure after he got through a bunch of his text messages, uh, then he responded to me. So we did talk via text. Would you have been honest with him if he uh, said, "Hey, tell me, tell me uh, your thoughts about the Warriors"? Uh, I'm honest all the time. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, <laughs> so that that's not going to be – I'm not going to pull any punches in. For some people, that's uncomfortable. But uh, to me, that's how I like to be uh, presented with facts, and that's how I like to be treated also. So give me the truth, and I'll deal with everything else. All right, before I let you go, you uh, famously said that uh, Kobe, I think, would be better than Michael Jordan, could be better than Michael Jordan, right? I said at the end of the day, he's in the discussion with Michael yes. Jordan. And- when okay. his body of work is complete, I think you'll have a you know a serious debate. Okay. Will we have that debate about LeBron James and Michael Jordan when it's all said and done? That's a great question. I did say last night, in my opinion, he's the best you know small forward to ever play this game, and I always thought Larry Bird was, and I had tremendous respect for him, and obviously still do. Um, but I, I do believe when you talk about LeBron and what he's going to finish with. Here's a guy that's going to be, you know, you can make the case he's going to be the all-time leading scorer. He's going to be top five in assists. He's going to be, you know, how many times will he be an MVP, an all-star, and a gold medalist? How many times will he be, you know, you're talking about as an elite defense? He's going to be in the discussion with anybody that's ever played this game. It's absolutely incredible watching him play and uh, the way he conducts himself, too. So it's going, it's going to be very, very interesting. And who would have thought that we put anybody in the class of, Michael or Kobe or, you know, any other, you know, th- those guys that's on, on a one-name basis. But LeBron has certainly climbed the charts quickly. Well, I wouldn't have – I'm not afraid to do it. You were. You are afraid Michael was going to be upset at you. So, and that's the No, you were, you're afraid that Scotty was going to be upset. Scotty. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> you're still nervous about Scotty Pippen. <laughs> Tell me about it, right? Yeah, when you dunked on him. You remember that, right? <laughs> He doesn't. I'm just, I'm just saying that the streets are still talking about that. Oh, man, that was quite a dunk, man. Quite a dunk. Uh, safe travels to Indiana. Good to talk to you. Thanks for having me again. Good talking to you. Mark Jackson, NBA on ESPN, former Warriors head coach.